What's up guys, my name is David Sawares and today we're going to be talking about an article I read about Linux and this is the Linux desktop battle and why it matters. And I agree with this article a lot in the fact that Linux is in the middle of a battle and it's the battle of acceptance and the battle of winning the desktop. And I'm going to talk about a little events, a couple things that made me become a Linux user and why I believe Linux is the future of the desktop and of the PC industry and of a lot of different industries in general and it's already beginning now with a lot of things. So the first thing I want to point out before I really get in deep into this Linux video is the new format. So if you see on the, the sides we have the blue bars and the topic section and the verdict section. Now this is a format I'm going to be trying out and I want some comment and feedback on the new layout because I feel like recording the desktop is a, a major part of my of my YouTube and how I do YouTube and how I kind of format my videos. But I also want to have a more interactive format with the the other parts of what I talk about and have a more detailed part of it in text and in different icons and in a more not as generic just screen capture way so that's what I'm going to be doing so as I'm talking different topics are going to be popping up in the topic section so you see now it will say the, de the Linux desktop battle in the topic section and then towards the end of the video I will say my verdict and what I think is my final verdict in the video so I hope you do and like the new format and uh, let's begin so what I'm talking about the 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 lag and the acceptance of a Linux, the Linux desktop is is the adoption of it. A lot of people, especially in the older generation, don't understand what Linux is, and a lot of people don't understand what it's supposed to do and what it's meant to do. And Linux overall is it's a free alternative to like Windows and Mac, and it's it's a much better. I I in, it's my own opinion, and when I say I, I enjoy it much better than the two and kind of contradicting myself as I'm using Windows right now but it's because not I'm forced to use Windows but it's because of convenience and I think that's what Linux has the problem of is Linux in a lot of places does not have the convenience for example when I want to update Linux especially for Arch Linux which is the Linux I, I run um, there's a lot of problems like recently I tried to update my entire Linux system in a broken video entirely broken video for another time and then now breaking steam so I was like okay now we're broken now I have to fix it so I, had to, I uninstalled everything and then reinstalled everything it still didn't work still didn't work and then for a long time I couldn't get it to work and now finally I got it to work by using a simple command um, NVIDIA xconfig you gotta type in um, terminal after you install the NVIDIA drivers so that's my main issue with with using Linux as of as a like different things that I want I want to be able to do very easily I can't do on Linux and I I hate to say that because I love Linux. Um, another a, a recent thing I've been doing is um, I bring bringing my uh, Lenovo T sixty one which I haven't made a video on yet which I have to I I'll go into a little bit now is I purchased a a Lenovo T sixty one on eBay it didn't have a hard drive it had two gigs of RAM and I bought it and I had it home I had a, a Seagate external hard drive I removed the hard drive from the external shroud and I put it into the into the laptop and it's one terabyte and I installed Arch Linux on it and it runs fantastically with two gigabytes of RAM I have um, 1.5 gigabyte swap so it can swap between the two gigs of RAM and then like a basically another two gigs of kind of RAM where it will swap between doesn't have to use my random access memory all the time so it runs like a beast and one thing that I've been bringing is I've been bringing it to my high school and a lot of the things a part of it is um a teacher of mine, my Spanish teacher, just got a smart board, and she didn't get a laptop yet. And I've been bringing my laptop, and she said, oh, you want to hook up your laptop? And I'm running Arch Linux, so I was like, sure, let me, let me try it out. So for that period, I sat there, and I tried it out. And for some reason, there is no smart board notebook for Arch Linux. And out of all the softwares I play around with Arch Linux, Arch Linux is usually the one that gets it first, or is the one where you type in the, the software, any software, usually, you type in the software name and Arch Linux, and it will be popped up in the AUR, and I could not, for the life of me, find the smart board, the smart board notebook app or driver, and it doesn't exist for Arch Linux, and that's, that's a, a lack of adoption by the smart board people. So when I went home that day and I, I was thinking about it and I, I looked up open source smart board drivers and the way I went was open Sencore, which is a open source whiteboard driver. It's it's it act it uses the, the, the smart board by default when you plug it in, at least to my laptop, it was registering almost as like a touch screen. Using the mouse as a, it, it it felt like it was acting like a mouse. So what you do with this software is it launches up and then you're able to 
I close the laptop screen and then when you're in the interface which hopefully will scroll by again here I'll make it pop up again these icons you're able to just use the mouse and write so I was able to get the smart board to work with open source free drivers and that is awesome and I really do enjoy that now back to really the main topic of what this video is is the lack of support and that's more of an example of the lack of support is that smartboard decided and eh, we don't want to make a Linux driver for Arch Linux they do have Ubuntu drivers so if you're running Ubuntu and you are in the school system then you can use that for your smartboard but it's it's the fact that you can't do it on every Linux distribution is the problem and recently I have to make a video on it as well is they made a, a app store for Arch Linux it's by GNOME and I'll get into that in a different video it's a cool app store it doesn't I, I haven't got it to work yet I, I tried it on my on my desktop and I couldn't get any I tried Inkscape and I couldn't get it to install so that's a separate thing and I'm getting off topic now but for the uh, writer of this article his name is Jack Wallen he is a more Ubuntu Unity user and I, I, it's okay I, I I never really when I tried Ubuntu I never really got on board with Canonicals um, Vision and I didn't really like Unity so I, I moved on to Linux Mint and then eventually what I use and love now Arch Linux so he goes into depth about the different industry things about how Apple rise to power for computers and most a lot of a lot of the school systems now are getting Apple laptops, uh, uh, MacBook Pros, different than like that, and a lot of the students are getting Chromebooks. So, what I feel the major problem Linux has right now is adoption by people, and people relatively don't know what Linux is about or they've had a bad experience. And I think what Linux needs to find, which would would go against what Linux really is as a, as a current state, but they have to get the user base, and they have to become more user-friendly. Now, what I mean by user-friendly is, and I'm going to have a bunch of topics popping in right now, um, user-friendly is what I mean by my grandmother can install Linux with two clicks or a couple clicks, don't really have to understand what you're filling out, understand you, you put your user, your password, things like that, but it, it doesn't have to require a terminal because... As we all know, a grandmother is not going to understand how to navigate a terminal or be able to use a terminal. So that's what I mean by lack of lack of user friendliness. The UI is becoming much more user friendly. GNOME is fantastic on the smart board. It works fantastically. It's very touch optimized. So that's great for my teacher and the way that she wants to use her smart board. And I want I, I in the in the future I want be able I want Linux to be able to be used by anybody. I mean by anybody, which means anyone with any level of technology in their brain, like without anyone ever having to use the terminal. And that's a, it's a hard thing for say to, to say for me because I love the terminal. And that's the only way I could survive in Linux is with the terminal. But that's me. And that's how our like, kind of geeky people will do that. But for a normal teacher and a normal person, they're not going to depend on terminal to do things because they never had to before. Windows and Mac and OS X, they don't depend on using terminal. And the reason that Linux is not adopted, I think, is because of that fact. And this article, it also says the big difference between Windows and OS X and Linux is that the choice and the choice that you can make between your desktop interface. You have a million different choices, Unity, GNOME, KDE, XFCE. There's a billion of them, and that's why I loved Linux. I still love it now because of choice. When I first started, when I first played around with Linux, I, cho I was trying as many different distributions as I possibly could get my hands on. XFCE, GNOME, OpenBox, everything. It was amazing. And I, at the time, I loved it. And even now, when I reinstall Arch Linux once in a while, when it breaks or when I feel like I need a fresh start, I always choose a different one from when I first started with GNOME, then I went to KDE, now I went to Cinnamon, and I'm back at GNOME when I reinstalled everything, I went back to GNOME. And another part that I enjoyed of this article is in, I'm talking about puzzle called relevance. And in this part in the article, he describes how Linux has made strides in finding acceptance in different industries, such as servers. Servers are heavily dependent on Linux nowadays. You can run a server like crazy on Linux. I have... Uh, TeamSpeak, which is a voice, a voice, a VoIP server, voice over IP, and I have a my website is hosted on DigitalOcean, all backed by Linux, and I can do almost anything on a Linux server. I can make OpenVPN to make my own VPN server. I can host the Drupal or own cloud crazy cool different things all on the Linux platform. I, I even want to make a video soon on on the file system ZFS or ZFS, which is a very server-based and future-based um, file format, which can hold up to, I don't know, like, um, two, two billion zettabytes, which is like a thousand petabytes. It's, it's crazy, the storage amount you can hold 
and there's things like Z-Pools, I, I can't get into it in this video, but I will make another video all about ZFS in the future. So, that's going to be it for this video, now we're going to get to the verdict. The verdict is going to be, what do you think will make Linux rele relevant for everybody? What will make Linux be able to bring not only geeks and people who want to do things under the hood, but also people who can get around it, and people who are not technologically inclined, people who cannot use terminal just because they really can't get their mind around it. People who like that who will never be able to navigate a terminal unless they're really, really taught really well, people like that to adopt Linux is kind of difficult because of software and the lack of it. So what do you think about, about the relevance and the ad adaptation of Linux? And in the comments below, tell me your situations of where you've been able to get people to adopt to Linux. I've been working on people with older computers and even newer computers. I think that Linux can go on any type of computer and it can really do anything it wants. So that's going to be it for this video. What do you think about the new interface, the new layout for my videos? Please leave that in the comments below and I'll message you back. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs>